Good morning to those in the building and those viewing online. Welcome to MTS Chapel for today. This is the last Tuesday for Black History Month. So we will celebrate once more today the history um, of our people, of my people, of my ancestors. If we would stand for the call to worship and prayer. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. Great is the Lord. One generation shall laud your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works, we will meditate. The might of your awesome deeds shall be proclaimed, and we will declare your greatness. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. Let us pray. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. God, as we continue to celebrate Black History Month, we pause in this moment to give you praise. God, we praise you for the tenacity of a people who suffered and persevered, a people who struggled and overcame, a people who were cut off but survived through their connection with you. God, grant us an ounce of the faith of those whose bodies were bound and bloodied but whose faces were still turned to you. God, we give you praise for the richness of that history and for how we are able to continue to build on the backs and stand on the shoulders of those who came before us. We praise you for this day as we gather in your name to experience your grace and your greatness. You, O oh God, are worthy to be praised. So God, we pause the busyness of our day. We breathe in your glory and we say, let everything that hath breath Praise the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. We offer this prayer of praise in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. If you'll remain standing for our congregation.
be seated. I have the pleasure to introduce our speaker today. And I'm going to actually, sometimes I give a personal account, sometimes I read the bio. Sometimes the bio is so good it deserves to be read. So that's what I want to do. I want you to know who is standing before you. Dr. Kia Conaway is a proud alumna of Clark Atlanta University, the University of Chicago, and our very own Memphis Theological Seminary, where she graduated at the top of her classes. Today, as a licensed and ordained elder with a decade of experience in ministry leadership, Kia has helped to shape strategy for some of the lar largest churches in the South. She has also served as both the youngest clergy per person to pray on the Tennessee House floor and to lead the National Day of Prayer in Memphis alongside its mayor. She has been featured in Essence Magazine on three separate occasions and graced the cover of Spirit Magazine. Recently, she was selected as one of the top 40 leaders in Memphis. A frequent speaker on the campus of Clark Atlanta University, soon to be frequent speaker on the campus of Memphis Theological Seminary. She has been, <laughs> she has been the graveside speaker at her beloved Dr. Is Isabella Jenkins funeral, a homecoming chapel speaker, and often the keynote speaker for Dean Hemet's events. During the pandemic, she participated in the virtual alumni roundtables as a guest speaker as well. She used this same gift during Clark Atlanta's National Day of Giving in 2022, her graduating class from the top 50 to the top 10 in three hours. Dr. Key is the founding pastor and lead visionary of the Church at the Well in Memphis. This endeavor makes her the first female African-American millennial church pastor in her region by all accounts. The church has grown to almost 500 members in a five years time and has a large outreach footprint due to donating over $250,000 to individuals and organizations in need in its first five years of existence. Dr. Kia Conaway, is a consultant and strategist for churches and nonprofits with 13 years experience creating campaigns that raise money for organizations. She has served on the executive staff for four of the largest churches in the South. She completed her doctoral work right recently, I should say right here, recently on the intersections of the black church fundraising and social media. Through this endeavor, she successfully raised a six figure song for a mega church by utilizing its online audience. She, I'm saying all of this, so her phone should be going off right now. People should be texting her right now. Uh, Dr. Kia served the Biden-Harris campaign to African-American faith team and led local, state, and national calls with clergy and denominational leaders. She, is also, she was also responsible for social media strategy to amplify the calls. Today, she joins the Biden-Harris administration on both the national faith leaders and COVID-19 community corp team meetings through this work, Dr. Kia was able to host vaccine inventor, Dr. Kismikia, is, am I pronouncing that right? Kismikia Corbett for a local event to educate people about the vaccine. We are blessed, we are excited to have Dr. Kia Conaway to deliver her message for us today, as well as we are excited again to have Gary Walker here who is going to Lead us in a worship medley, and after that, the next voice you will hear will be Dr. Kia. Thank you. 
Let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you today. We thank you for life and health and strength, God. We thank you for your power and your presence, even in this moment, God. We thank you for the ability to worship you, God. We thank you for the ability to bow at your throne, God. We ask that you allow this service to go even higher, God, that you would dispatch your angels to surround us so that we might have an encounter today, God. Speak to our hearts, God. Speak to our minds, God. Speak to our destiny, God. Hide me, God. Let them see you, God, and encounter you, God. Remove me from the situation, God, and speak through me. God, we thank you for our history. We thank you for our legacy. We thank you for the work that is being done today, and we thank you for the work you will anoint our hands to do tomorrow. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray, amen, and thank God. It is an honor to be here. I think this might be my first time doing chapel outside of the assigned chapel you have to do. Who that was a, a lot. <laughs> you wanted to preach in front of my classmates? <laughs> um, but it's an honor to be here, uh, to our president, to our staff, to all of you. Um, it's a blessing to be here today to Dr. Todd for inviting me. Um, it is um, coming to the conclusion of Black History Month. 
And um, as I consider the close of Black History Month, my mind cannot shake a tweet that I saw uh, the other day. A woman uh, said, well, I'm, I'm old now. I'm going to always call it Twitter. It's going to be Twitter. I don't know what X is. Amen. <laughs> so it was a tweet, OK? Mm -hmm. um, but she said this was one of the most uneventful Black History Month in history. And she was remarking about how normally in black history there's some moment, some watershed moment, some viral post or something that reminds us of our legacy and that we hadn't had that moment this year. And she talked about how there was just a lot of sadness, a lot of apathy um, in the black community and a lot of fear. And it made me think about how black joy is muted often today, um, that we have come to a place, uh, particularly in America, where we have to mute our excitement about our culture. We have to blend in because it is the safest thing to do for our livelihood and for our lives sometimes. And so I thought about the fear that mutes our joy, fear of being killed by police, fear of being killed by a neighbor who sees robbery as the only ticket to prosperity, fear, right, of being underpaid and overworked, fear of being laid off and or replaced by AI, yeah. fear of having a president who ignites the passions of and hearts of white nationalists and fear of the pastors who spread the same hate on Sunday, fear. Fear has muted black joy in so many contexts, but I'm reminded of this scripture. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And while there is a saying that's been floating around online and maybe in chain letters before there was internet, that the words fear not it appear in the Bible at least 365 times. I don't know if that's true or not because I didn't have time to check this morning. But I will say this, that it's there a lot of times. And I need you to understand that it's in the Bible so much, not just because God does not want us to fear. It's there because we serve a God that knows that we will fear and anticipates our fears in advance. And so although 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind, I need you to know that because God did not give it to you, it does not mean he will withdraw from you. A lot of us spent time in churches thinking that if we fear there is something wrong with us, that if there is fear that God is going to remove himself for us, that if we fear we're not going to be able to accomplish our purpose. But we can even see in the life of Thomas uh, that sometimes doubt is not necessarily a separator between you and the grace of God. And so although Thomas is known for doubt, I want to draw your attention to the effort that Jesus showed him um, in the text to help him. Because some of us, we think that fear and unbelief will separate us from God, but nothing can separate us from God. And so if you look at John chapter 20, around verses 24 through 29, you see that Thomas's confession of fear and unbelief triggered a deep encounter for Thomas because God loves us so much that he can turn our fear and doubt into an encounter. Uh, the etymology of encounter says a meeting of adversaries. And this triggered something in my mind because in black church, we like to talk about having an encounter. We want to have an encounter. We want to shout. We want to dance. We want to fall out and be slain in the spirit. And I've always thought an encounter meant some sort of joyous, harmonious collect I mean, collaboration between two entities. But the etymology of encounter means a meeting of adversaries. And so it blessed me because we think that Thomas had a touching moment with Jesus where he comes to his Savior and says, hey, I'm I'm struggling with what's going on and I need you to help me. But what really happens is deeper than that. The fear and doubt that Thomas possessed was an adversary to the presence of a true and living God. And in order for the fear and doubt to dissolve, there had to be an encounter, a meeting of adversaries. Thomas had to touch Jesus and Jesus had to open his hands so that fear could meet faith and faith could take hold. Just because God did not give Thomas the spirit of fear and doubt, it did not mean that God would withdraw from him. And he won't withdraw from you either. Uh, the next thing that I realized as I was dealing with this concept of fear and us closing out black history, and what does that mean for all of us as believers, is that just because God didn't give it to you, it doesn't mean you can't have faith at the same time. Mm. My absolute favorite passage about faith is not the one that many of you think of. It's actually in Mark 9, where the man brings his demon-possessed son to Jesus. Oh, I love that passage so much because it flies in the face of a lot of bad theology we grew up hearing about faith and unbelief and doubt. We spend most of our time as Christians clamoring for a mustard seed of faith, and rightfully so, because that mustard seed of faith is supposed to cure cancer. That mustard seed of faith is supposed to save marriages. That mustard seed of faith is supposed to open wombs. That mustard seed 
of faith is supposed to end poverty. That mustard seed of faith is supposed to restore the broken. That mustard seed of faith is supposed to open blind eyes. That mustard seed of faith is supposed to make the lame walk. But what happens when you have a mustard seed of faith and a mountain of fear and doubt? Uh, We see in the ninth chapter of Mark that a man comes to Jesus begging and says these famous words, I believe, help my unbelief. That brief plea is significant to me because it solidifies my own reservations about people who demonize those who fear and castigate those who doubt. Yes, we should have faith and we should strive to have deeper faith every day, but I want you to understand that we are human and prone to have fears and very likely to have doubts. What we see in Mark 9 is a man just as vulnerable as Thomas was in the first point. This man confesses his fear and doubt to Jesus, and as it was with Thomas, not only do we see an encounter, but we also see that Jesus still performs the miracle. This is what blessed me because God did not give this man his fear or his doubt, but in the same heart where belief lived, there was also unbelief. And in the same moment where a rebuke for a lack of faith could have meant no miracle, we see Jesus still performing the miracle in the presence of fear and and doubt. I need you to understand that faith is the goal as believers, but fear is not the end of the world. God can use your honesty about your fears as a doorway to deeper faith. I'm not going to be before you long because they said I had about 15 minutes. And so the final thing that I realized is that just because God didn't give it to you, it doesn't mean that God doesn't understand it. Uh, This is important to me because in the book of Matthew in chapter 27 we find Jesus on the cross experiencing the very moment that he always knew was coming the moment that he was born for and yet with all knowledge and all power Jesus the Savior cries out God why have you forsaken me the Aramaic word used here means to to be abandoned or left behind Jesus with all knowledge and, and all wherewithal of what he was designed to do in this very moment finds himself in so much pain that he begins to question the plan of God. Jesus came to die for our sins, but on the cross, he has to die to his own fears and his own doubts. And when I consider the brief doubtful moment of Christ, our savior, I am given revelation. God did not give us the spirit of fear, but the ability to fear is in our DNA. Science shows us in science that fear comes from the brain. And when people see something that frightens them, the hypothalamus in the brain reacts by releasing a series of chemicals into the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system tells your heart rate to increase. The parasympathetic system, although, tells your heart rate to decrease. These are the systems that fluctuate when you are afraid. The harder you push the sympathetic nervous system, the more frightened you are, the harder it pushes the parasympathetic system to work even harder. So the harder you're, um, the harder you're, the more you're afraid, the harder each system works to counteract each other. Fear is an automatic biological response controlled by the sympathetic and parasympathetic systems in our bodies. And I'm going somewhere because these same systems control breathing. Uh, I want you to understand that God did not give you the spirit of fear, but the ability to fear is in your DNA. And the ability to fear is human and it's just as human as the ability to breathe. Your breathing usually does not require any thought because it is controlled by the same systems that control fear. The autonomic nervous system, also called the involuntary nervous system, includes the parasympathetic system and the sympathetic system. system. The parasympathetic system slows your breathing rate, just like it slows your heart rate. The sympathetic system increases your breathing rate, just like it increases your heart rate when you are afraid. Hear me, people of God, the same systems that make you breathe make you fear. And as easy as you breathe, you can also fear. To fear is to be human. And to have faith is to give God your humanity in exchange for the fruit of a relationship with him. Everybody that has fear, I mean, everybody that has breath has fear. I want you to hear me. Everybody that has breath has fear. Everybody that has breath has fear. But not everybody that has fear has faith. I want to talk to a few people today that know what it's like to be a little worried, but you still trust God. To be a little fearful, but you still believe God. To be a little doubtful, but you know God can do it. To have a little unbelief, but enough belief to get a prayer through. If that's you today, why don't you give God glory? Because fear is as natural as breathing. And everything that has breath has fear, but not everything that has fear has faith. But if you have just a little bit of fear this morning, and a little bit of faith this morning, and a little bit of breath in your body, then you owe God a praise because just like Dr. Todd started off this morning, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. If you have fear, then you have faith. And if you have faith and you have breath, let everything that have faith, praise the Lord. So we thank God today.
for the journey of our ancestors that had their faith lead them out of fearful situations. And as long as they had breath in their body, they fought. Yeah. And so I want to encourage you today to continue to fight, to not to demonize yourself when there's fear, but to draw on your faith and to recognize that faith, I mean, that fear does not disqualify you from an encounter you with God. Jesus. God. God, we thank you. God, we give you glory and honor. God, we bless your name today for our fear. Now, that's a crazy prayer to pray, God, but I thank you for my fear. I thank you for my fear, God, because it brought me to my knees, God. My fear brought me to your feet, God. Every time I fell to my knees, I landed at your feet. So I thank you for my fear because it led to an encounter, God. It led to an encounter, God, where the adversary fear I had met your powerful faith, and then I became stronger. So we thank you for fear that builds faith, God. And so I thank you for my biology that defines my divine experiences with you, God, that you are not in conflict with science, but that you work with science. And so I thank you today, God, for the struggles that made us stronger, God, for the encounters, God, that made our relationship with you richer, God, and for the ways that you open up pathways for us to see you more deeply through our vulnerability. God, we confess today that we have been afraid. We confess today that we have been doubtful. We confess today that we, like Jesus on the cross, have felt abandoned, but we recognize that you have never left us. We recognize that you won't turn your back from us. We recognize that unbelief is not a barrier to a miracle. So we call on you today for the miraculous. We call on you today for the encounter. We call on you today for the experience. Blow our minds as we lay aside our fears. We give them back to you because fear in your hands is a miracle. Unbelief in your hands is transformation. Doubt in your hands is our destiny. And so we thank you that in this moment, if we give it to you, you will give us something back that we never imagined. Change our lives, transform our story, and give us a testimony that might transform someone else. It is in the master's name of Jesus Christ that we pray and say amen. Thank you guys in-house and online for having me. God bless you. Unbelief is not a barrier to the miracle. I don't know about you, but that set me free. That set me free. I was just having a conversation with someone about fear. And uh, I will make sure that person goes back and listens. And I would encourage you, for those in the room, those online, every once in a while you need to review and rewind. I call it a rewind blessing. You need to go back and hear this again and allow God to speak even more deeply than your emotion felt during the sermon. So go back and get the blessing of the rewind. Amen. Amen. Give God praise for Dr. Kia Connerwell. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have, um, prayerfully, you have enjoyed it. I've enjoyed this month where the House of Black Church Studies has had the privilege and the pleasure of hosting chapel. Uh, we promise not to just completely disappear until next February. <laughs> it's like, all right, that's it. See you next year. Uh, definitely had a great time. Once more, give God praise for Gary Walker. He was with us for two of our sessions. I want to honor um, Pastor Reginald Boyce, who opened us up, Reverend Mary Moore, who told the line, and Dr. Kia Conaway, who brought us on home. <laughs> so I am grateful for that. Uh, Dr. Hill, you have any remarks? Thank you, thank you, thank you. I left my um, bulletin. Yes. Oh, you're fine. I, prom I promise not to read your notes. Those are all the things that I have. If all minds are clear, we can stand for our benediction. May the God of love, peace, compassion, justice, and grace walk with us as we leave this space. May his light shine in us and through us so that all who we encounter may see Jesus. May we love like he who first loved us. And may our words and thoughts and actions align with the will of God and reflect those of our Savior Christ Jesus. God, we love you. 
We honor you. We bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. amen.